Now, we've been told that the airship is going to make an attempted landing in the rain. And if that is the case, we're going to have a mind to find a description of it because uh, of it for you, because the men will have a difficulty in keeping footing in the sand, and especially since it's wet. Now, the structure is light and yet so strong in the Hindenburg. From the ground as the ship passes, we can see the passenger quarters. They're located just about a third of the distance back of the nose and just about a third of the distance from the keel. They're sort of square in shape and seem to extend the entire width of the ship. There are two decks, A and B, A being the main one and the one where most of the passengers assemble during the passage. Lining the sides of the deck are the observation windows. Now, they're slanted so that uh, it will give anyone in the interior a fine view downward. And no doubt as the ship went over a number of times, the people were looking down at the great mass of humanity assembled here in the field. A thousand people have come out to witness the landing of this great airship. Like that, now, there's a long, wide counter inside the observation section of the ship. And you can look down to the ground below, leaning on a table. And below the table, you see a relief map of the various air routes of the world. So as you travel along in the Hindenburg, you can watch the progress shown up on this map. Deck A is the upper of the two decks, and to get to deck B, it's necessary, necessary for you to walk through a foyer and down a pair of stairs. There you find what is really a combined smoking room and lounge. Passengers are always thrilled when Captain Max Pris or Captain Ernst Lehman will take you a trip to the, uh, the giant airship. So it's many sections, up and down along the aluminum alloy girders, over the catwalks which lead from one area to another. And then you see a, a maze of bright metal girders everywhere. And after a walk through the ship, you're ready to rest where you've covered a great amount of space and you realize that you have traveled a great distance. Now they're coming in to make a landing of the Zeppelin. I'm going to step out here and uh, cover it from the outside. So as I move out, we'll just stand by a second. Well, here it comes, ladies and gentlemen. We're out now outside of the hangar. And what a great sight it is. A thrilling one. It's a marvelous sight. It's coming down out of the sky, pointed directly towards us and toward the mooring mass. The mighty diesel motors just roared. The propellers biting into the air and throwing it back into a gale-like whirlpool. No wonder this great floating palace can travel through the air at such a speed with these powerful motors behind it. The sun is striking the windows of the observation deck on the eastward side and sparkling like gl glittering jewels on a background of black velvet. And every now and then, the propellers are caught in the rays of the sun, and the highly polished surfaces are like circles of gold. Now, the field that we thought active when we first arrived has turned into a moving mass of cooperative action. The landing crews have rushed to the post, the post and spots, and orders are being passed along, and last-minute preparations are being completed for the moment we have waited for so long. The ship is riding majestically toward us like some great feather. Riding as though it was mighty, mighty proud of a place it's playing in the world's aviation. The sh ship is no doubt bustling with activity, as we can see. Orders are shouted to the crew. The passengers are probably lining the windows, looking down at the field ahead of them, getting their glimpse of the mooring mass. And these giant flagships standing here, the American Airline flagships, waiting to rise them to all points in the United States when they get the ship moored. There are a number of important persons on board, and no doubt the new commander, Captain Max Fish. Is thrilled too for this is his great moment, the first time he's commanded the Hindenburg. For on previous flights, he acted as a chief officer under Captain Lehman. It's practically standing still now. They've dropped ropes out of the nose of the ship, and uh, has been taken a hold of down on the field by a number of men. It's starting to rain again. It, the rain had uh, scratched up a little bit. The back motors of the ship are just holding it uh, just enough to keep it from. It's first in the flames. It's falling, it's rising. Watch it, watch it, watch it. Get out of the way, get out of the way. Get this, Charlie, get this, Charlie. It's, it's rising, it's rising terrible. Oh, my, get out of the way, please. It's running, bursting into flames, and, and it's falling on the morning fast, and all the folks between it. This is terrible. This is the one of the worst catastrophes in the world. Oh, it's, 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 it's rising, 20, oh, four, five hundred feet into the sky. And it, it's a terrific crash, ladies and gentlemen. The smoke and the flames now, and the flame is rising to the ground. Not quite to the mooring mass. All oh, the humanity and all the fans are just screaming around here. I don't do it. I can't even talk to people. The fans are out there. It's a, it's a, it's a, oh. I, I can't talk, ladies and gentlemen. Honest, it's just like a massive smoking wreckage. And everybody can hardly breathe and talk and scream. Lady, I, I, I'm sorry. Honestly, I, I can hardly breathe. I, I'm going to step inside while I cannot see it. <laughs> Sorry, that's terrible. <laughs> I, 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 listen, folks, I, I'm going to have to stop for a minute because I've lost the voice. This is the worst thing I've ever witnessed. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I'm back again. I've, I've, I've sort of recovered from the terrific explosion and the terrific crash that occurred just as it was being pulled down to the mooring mast. They're still smoking and flaming and crackling and banging down there. And I don't know how many of the ground crew were under it when it fell. It is a, not a possible chance for anyone to be saved. The relatives of the people who are waiting here ready to welcome their loved ones that came off this great ship are, are broken up. They're carrying them in to give them first aid and to restore them. Some of them have fainted. And the people are rush, rushing down to the uh, burning ship. The uh, fire trucks have all uh, gone down to see if they can extinguish any of the blaze whatsoever. But the terrible amount of uh, hydrogen gas in it just caused the, the tail surface broke into flame first, then there was a terrific explosion, and that followed by the burning of the nose and the crashing nose into the ground, and everybody carrying back a break neck speed to get out from underneath it, because it was over the people at the time it burst into flames. Now, whether it fell on the people who were witnessing this, we do not know, but as it exploded, they rushed back, and now it's smoking a terrific black smoke floating up into the sky. The flames are still leaping maybe 30, 40 feet from the ground, the entire 811 feet length of it. They're frantically calling for uh, ambulances and things. The wires are being hu uh, humming with uh, activity. And uh, I I've, I've lost my, my breath several times during this exciting moment here. Uh, will you pardon me just a moment? I'm not going to stop talking. I'm just going to swallow several times until I can keep on. I should imagine that the nose is not uh, more than 500 feet or maybe 700 feet from the mooring mast. They have dropped two ropes, and uh, whether or not uh, some spark or something set it on fire, we don't know, or whether something pulled loose on the inside of the ship causing a spark and causing it to explode in the tail surface. But everything crashed to the ground, and there's not a possible chance of anybody being saved. I wish I could stop in just a moment and uh, see if I can get my breath again. And Charlie, if you'll fade it out just a minute, I'll come back with more description later.